All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, I've got uh, I got a vlog planned out for you guys today. It's going to be a little bit of a condensed vlog. I'm going to do that thing where I put all of the timestamps down here so you can see what's included and what's possibly missing. I actually don't have any vape mail this week. Okay, that's not entirely true. I have one singular package this week from Inokin. That is the only vape mail I have this week, probably due to Chinese New Year. I know about two weeks ago, China was really cranking out stuff and really sending out a fuck ton of packages because they shut down for Chinese New Year and that's when nothing is getting shipped out. So my vape mail consists of one singular package this week, but we're gonna open it and we're gonna set up whatever is inside. It's from Inokin, so I'm very curious as to what is inside that box. But we'll get there when we get there. Like I said, all of the timestamps should be here, maybe still right now. If they're not, Nick, put them back up here. This is what's going on in the vlog this week. I think we're gonna be doing some vape mail. We're definitely gonna be drinking some beer. I have a retro vaping prepared. I think we're going to do some viewer mails as well as cover some of the news bits that's that bleh, 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 <laughs> as well as cover some of the news that has been coming out recently. Uh, there is a new study out there talking about the correlation between uh, e-cigs, vaping, and DNA damage, which I find very compellingly uh, interesting to read. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that, but welcome. Welcome to the vlog. Before we get too far into this, oh yeah, the new office. This is the new office. Uh, I, I finally finished, mostly finished, my big office redo. Everything is moved around. The camera, we're actually on the other side of the room now, and I have shot zero video in this office since it's been since it's been redone so i get the vibe that this is going to be uh remember <laughs> remember back earlier in this year when i was just experimenting around with camera angles and lighting all over the place yeah oh it's going to be a lot more of that again no that's not actually that true i have a, i have an idea of what i want to do in here it's just you know my my lighting is different windows are on the other side i have lighting in different places and cameras and stuff like that and this is all very very boring but anyway yeah yeah, it's here. It's good. I got some new shelves. We got some new toys. We got some new art and stuff to look at. It should all be very much more interesting back back in this area. Back in the part that doesn't matter should be a lot more interesting now. But before we get too far into this vlog, I want to do that thing that I do that's my new favorite thing to do where I hear from one of my subscribers. So right now, I'd like to take a second and hear from Josh. Hey, Nick. My name's Josh. I'm from Southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, long time subscriber. Love your videos. Love everything you do. Just a shout out to you and the rest of the squad. You guys are great. Love what you do for the community. The advocacy, advocacy is amazing. I have uh, a very special mod that I like to show you. Uh, you've actually got two of them, uh, as well as uh, Ruby, Jess, Tony B, and Dwayne. Dull Dimes, number one four. Love it. Uh, Michelle was gracious enough to send it to me. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I'd like to give one more shout out to Brandon Oliver in the Namber Juice group. Some awesome fucking coils, man. Great. Um, Diamondback Vape, check them out. Get some coils. And uh, thanks again for what you do. Let's keep on vaping. And of course, we're going to shout out Brandon Oliver from the Namber Juice Facebook group. I'm not sure if I've actually got to try any of his coils yet. Good to know that they're nice and high quality. I actually think he hit me up. I might need to get back to him. Regardless, I actually do really want to try his coils as well because a lot of people have been speaking really highly of them. Anyway, Josh, thank you so much for sending in a video. If anybody out there watching has a similar video that they would like to send in and request a shout out for themselves or whoever has been a person in their life that is that needs a shouting out. I don't know why I was saying that so awkwardly, but yes, you can send a video just like Josh's over to Nick at GrimGreen.com and uh, they get watched and they get may get used in this vlog. It's just one of my new favorite things that I do. I like hearing from my subscribers, so send them on over. So right now I want to talk real quick about what I have been vaping recently. As you saw already, uh, the Michelle Lynn Base Altoids Tin Homemade Dual Pair unregulated box mod. I got it topped with the Recoil Rebel. This has a build in it that I don't know what it is. Oh, this is my round wire build. This is my round wire center post build I put in here. I believe this is 22 gauge.
gauge nichrome anarchist wire i think i did a six wrap on a three millimeter it comes out to right around 0.14 on a dual parallel unregulated 18650 box mod it just hits nice and hard this is loaded up with that sage nicotine salts fall delight that just sweet savory tobacco juice that i just can't seem to get enough of and vaping it like crazy and it tastes uh it tastes delicious and warm in this And I've actually also been hanging in there with all of the sub-ohm tanks that I talked about earlier in this week. I got the Sense Heracles 3 loaded up with uh, Ripe Vapes Straw Nanner. I'm actually vaping two Savage e-liquids in this What I've Been Vaping segment. And I always have to say this in the open of, in, you know, in the interest of being honest and open, full disclosure, Savage e-liquid pays Ruby Roo and I money to advertise on our Culture of Clouds podcast. And they also sent along some juices for tasting, and I've really, really loved the straw nanner from the Ripe, Ripe, Ripe Vapes, Vape 100? Shit, let me look at the bottle. Yes, the Ripe Collection. Straw Nanners from the Ripe Collection. It's just delicious in this Heracles 3. Totally enjoying it. 0.43 at 49 watts for some reason. Why not round up to 50, Nick? Here we go. 0.43 ohm coil head at 50 watts on the, uh, you know, God, why can't I talk? I just can't seem to talk today. This is, we're not getting off to a good start with this vlog. Squid Industries Double Barrel, the original soft, uh, you know, soft finish, media blasted stainless steel finish. I just, I, I just love these mods. I'm using both of my double barrels. Love it. Great, great vape. That's a delicious vape. And on the other double barrel, I have that blue Fire Luke mesh filled up with Lowrider. This is... Pff, this is amazing. I've probably put already, I don't know, 20 mils of juice through this coil head, and I'm still just getting nothing but delicious flavor. I really, really enjoy those mesh coil heads. This is a 0.15 at 60 watts. That tank's a little bit on the loud side, isn't it? Also still hanging in there with that Vupu U-Force sub-ohm tank, and I still stand by everything I said in my video on Tuesday. I kind of dislike this tank. It feels cheap, it feels flimsy, and I really dislike the style choices they used on this. These dots and lines, I'm just not a big fan of that. It's not a pretty tank to look at. But the coil heads on the inside are stellar. They are some of the best coil heads I have used. This is filled up with Arcadia, that Arcadia juice. Yeah, this guy, the Arcadia juice. It is a lemon berry jawbreaker. It tastes great in this. With these coil heads, I love that it feels so smooth and so saturated. This is a 0.42 at 50 watts on the Evic Primo, which is a mod that I pull out from time to time. I never did a full review for it, but it's just one of those banger comfortable mods that I really enjoy using. Whenever I have something like a, a new RDA or a coil, uh, you know, or a, a sub ohm tank or something I need to rebuild and use for a little bit. I generally throw it on this Evic Primo just because I love the shape of this device. I like the feel of this device and it just overall fits real nice in the hand, which is kind of an important thing to me. But yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a bang and vape here. Nice. Feels nice. Feels very saturated. I really like these U-Force coil heads. Like I said in my other video, I just wish they came in a little bit uh, more appealing of a tank. And then I got that Dooley Life, that big Dooley tank sitting on top of my giant Leaning Tree Wood Mods. Posted a picture of this on Instagram last week and uh, not everybody was uh, really into it. People thought the mod was kind of ugly. People thought the tank was kind of ugly. People were judging my matchy-matchy level. They were like, that's not very matchy-matchy, Nick. Yeah, and I know, but uh, it's a big tank and I thought it de deserved a big mod. This is a mod that I think is personally very, very beautiful. These are also very, very expensive and I'll put a link down in the description to the Leaning Tree Mods uh, site as well as their Instagram. He makes some banging looking mods but they are big. These are like 44 big. If anybody remembers that Joe Lit 44, it's kind of along those same lines. It just feels really big and girthy in the hand. Again, 
So many that's what she said jokes. But I think it's beautiful. I love this purple and I love the green through the middle and it's so rarely that I get to use this mod because most things are just too small for this mod. Rocking this big re Leaning Tree Wood mod with like a little RDA on top just, it looks even more ridiculous than with a real big dually tank on top. But anyway, this dually is loaded up with a uh, Rogue from Vigilante. Just a delicious flavor that I've really been enjoying and I really do like these Cleto 120 coil heads from Aspire. They are far, far superior to the smoked tech coils that are also compatible with this tank tank. Dang, I've, I've got a lot. Apparently I've been vaping uh, a lot of devices. Still hanging in there with that Jabo Wismec uh, Luxotic BF box. I don't have the Tobina Atomizer or Tobino. It's the Tobino Atomizer. I'm pretty sure in that video on Monday I said Tobina about a thousand times before I corrected myself. But it is the Tobino, but it doesn't matter because it's not on here. This is the Alliance, Alliance Vapor Tech Flave 22 atomizer and it is the perfect little accent, the perfect little flavor banger RDA for this little BF box from Luxotic. Again, just love the way it feels in my hand, love how compact it is, and I truly love the vape that I'm getting from this. And I don't think I even have anything super fancy on the inside. It's a Fiends frame staple single coil on the inside, and I still haven't switched out the silicone bottle, although Mecha 101, who we were talking about in the review, he did the little tutorial for how to switch it out with the silicone bottle. I don't have a silicone bottle that actually fits in here real well, but I've heard through various channels and rumors that there are squonk, silicone squonk bottles that are either going to be coming with this in the future or they're going to be made available, they're compatible with this. And that's something that I'm really excited about because the rigid bottle in this, while it works, it is a bit rigid. Anyway, this is loaded up with Smacks Lick It peach cream flavor that, like that Fall Delight, I just can't seem to get enough of. I absolutely love it. This is a great vape. So good. Oh, that is a good vape. Second to lastly, I set up that Signature Tips Grim Green Edition SQ little squonker manufactured in the UK. I got it topped with the uh, original recipe recoil with a squonk pin in it. This is loaded up with Rainbow Sherbet in the Dark. It's a juice that I haven't vaped in a long time. It's a juice I used to vape just constantly, all the time. Loved the sherbet in the dark. And you know, it's one of those things where you just kind of have to take a break sometimes. So I took a little bit of a break, I came back, it's just as delicious as I remember it, especially in this original recipe recoil. Certainly not intending to toot my own horn, but the flavor that I get from the original recipe recoil is just some of my, my favorite flavor. This has a very simple ruby build in it. It's on top of a single 18650, mechanical unregulated. I think this is 24 gauge Niachrome Anarchist wire. I think I did a seven wrap on a two and a half millimeter. It came out right around a 0.19 and on a single 18650, it's still a nice flavorful vape. It's a little bit cooler, a little bit more mellow, a little bit more along the lines of like the Luxotic BF box type of vape or that, uh, that Asmodus Luna vape, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more flavorful. I'm just overall really enjoying it. Good. Oh, it's good. And lastly, 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 I'm still vaping that Asmodus Minikin Boost Kodama. I've got it topped with that Phobia RDA. I went and built that Phobia RDA and I've, I've actually really been enjoying it. It's a little bit of a weird deck to build on, but there's not a huge learning curve to it. It is really easy to wick. And even though it's like a two post separated deck design, you still have the ability to blay your juice through the middle without causing any real big flooding. It's got Kennedy style airflow and the airflow goes in and then kind of around and then right up at your coils. I've got it loaded up with the Savage Marcellus. Insert the Savage e-liquids disclaimer here one more time. This is a lemon cream something or other. Creamy lemon tart and it tastes delicious. This is a banging juice and it tastes real good in this Phobia RDA. And I got this Phobia RDA. I have to, I have to show you a close-up of this drip tip and 
and I don't know if it's going to show up on camera very well, but this is a DHD uh, nub drip tip that fits in the Phobia, and it's got like this it's this aqua, it's like aqua pearly. When you catch it in the right light, it has like this opalescence kind of pearly look to it. And I think it looks banging on this setup. And even just the drip tip alone, I think looks very, very cool. Uh, let's see, is that going to show up? Oh yeah, you see how it's kind of pearly right there when I turn it in the light, it gets a little bit pearly. You can see it like this pearly gleam over here. Just looks very, very cool. I think this just looks, uh, look, just looks super rad on this setup. Good, it's a delicious vape. This little Phobia RDA has some really banging flavor. The airflow isn't, it isn't amazing. It's not my favorite airflow. It's a little bit screechy. It's just a hair turbulent, but I really like the way this RDA not just looks, I like the way it tastes. So I'm kind of willing to put up with a little bit of that weird screechy airflow. It's an interesting airflow that I haven't really experienced before. Most RDAs, it's like a straight line between the air and your coils. It's either in or down or straight at your coils or even in Kennedy style airflow where it goes in and straight up like that. It's usually a direct path. This one kind of goes in and around and then up and then at your coils. It's got a little bit farther to travel, which I think kind of leads to creating that little bit of turbulence, that little bit of like a screechy sound that happens. But the flavor's banging and I like using it. So yeah, that is uh, more or less what I have been vaping. So shit, where do we go now? What are we What are we gonna do now? I think I'm actually gonna stay standing right now. I don't think I'm gonna change the camera angle because I really just wanna open this vape mail box, my singular vape mail box. So, uh, so let's do that now. All right, Inakin, so like I said, no matter what is in here, and I don't know what's in here, but no matter what is in here, I, I wanna set it up. I wanna set it up. I don't wanna cut this vape mail segment too short. I don't just wanna be like, oh, open the box, here's the stuff. Next segment, I'd actually like to spend a little bit of time with whatever is in this box, and this box is confusing to open. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Here's the, here's the normal part of the box. Remember, safety first. Cut towards your buddy, not towards your body. That's what Dwayne taught me. All right, cool, Inokin. Let's see what's in here. This is the Inokin Pocket Box. Oh, okay. That looks kind of really super cool. And it comes with, oh, there's a sub-ohm tank. Oh, the Scion 2. Oh, there's two products in here. <gasps> oh, now what am I gonna do? Am I gonna set up two things? Slipstream system for the pocket mod. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this pocket mod. Let's just open them. Let's just open the pocket mod real fast and decide if I'm gonna, if, and decide if I wanna set it up. So there was a black one and a white one inside, and then there was a blue one that actually wasn't in any packaging. I'm not sure if Inakin wanted me to open this one first because there's no there's no box for it. It doesn't it doesn't have the it doesn't have the same box with the graphics on it. I don't know what's going on over here, Inakin. I kind of just want to open this white one up. Ugh, okay, I'm gonna open the blue one up, and here's the reason why I'm opening the blue one up. It's because I have two spare pocket boxes, and I would like to add these into my collection of stuff for two dollar sales. And I'd rather send someone a in-the-box device rather than a half-opened device. So I'm gonna take one for the team here and I'm gonna use the blue half-opened device even though the white one is the one I really would like to try out. But it's cool. Honestly, doesn't really bother me. Let's get into this. Yeah, it's blue. It's a blue little pocket box. It's like uh, Mi 1 sized. I mean, not Mi 1 sized, it's Mi 1 styled. It's kind of along those same lines, that same kind of little small thing. Although I believe this is for uh, lung inhaling rather than mouth to lung inhaling like you would do with the Mi 1. Although with the Mi 1, the airflow is, is open enough that you could put some three or six in there and do some solid lung inhaling. You're just gonna go through a lot of juice and probably go through the battery life pretty quickly. Yeah, it's got a, uh, it's got a big tank right here. It's got a big clicky button right here. It's like a, a textured button. It's a little carbon fibery on the back. Here, let me show you guys this. So yeah, look at this little guy. Look at this little 
Pocket Book. Is that what it's called? No, it's called the uh, the Pocket Box. But you can see this one's kind of like a navy blue, some carbon fiber sticker right there. It's got like a, a textury looking button. There seems to be no other adjustments to do on here. So I'm assuming this is like an unregulated 3.7 you know, 3, 3 volts type of thing. There's your tank right there. Here's where you would attach a coil head. You can screw this down. And you have a little bit of uh, like an adjustable AFC right here. Yeah, full open. That is uh, that is very lungy, very clouds, bro, clouds. And yes, this this is what I want to set up today. And while we're all zoomed in like this, let's take a real quick look at that Inokin Scion 2 tank. I was a fairly big fan of the original Scion tank. I'm assuming this has a similar top fill system. Yep, just like that. I saw the arrow. You just press, opens like that. Coil head on the inside. AFC. Oh, it's clicky. Thank you for being clicky along the bottom. That's my favorite. Open this up. Wow, look at the size of that coil head. That is a that is a honking ass coil head in there. Uh, seems very simple, seems very straightforward. This is something, uh, this is kind of something I would also like to set up today. I think I'm just gonna do it. I think I'm just gonna set up both of these. I wanna set up the pocket box and I wanna set up the Scion 2 because that's all I have. That's all I have for vape mail. The vape mail segment is over. Welcome to the shortest vape mail segment. Maybe Maybe in the history of Grim Green vlogging, man. Anyway, I do want to get these set up. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now, I think we're going to jump back down to the desk. I actually have to fiddle around and find a new camera angle because like I said, I haven't shot any video in this office yet. So I'm not quite sure where the light's going to go, where the lights are going to go, where the camera's going to go. We'll, it, we'll experiment. We'll just experiment. But what I want to do is uh, at least pop back down to the desk. Uh, I would like to set these up but before we get to setting these up and vaping them I would like to cover some news so what we're gonna do right now is jump back down to the desk and do some news and advocacy news and advocacy yeah okay so I do have a few news and advocacy things that I wanted to talk about the first thing I wanted to mention uh, real quick just as a quick news thing a few weeks ago Few, this was weeks ago. This was a few weeks ago. I had just set up that Luxotic BF box. I had installed some J-Boy coils in it, and they had turned an interesting color. And I remember at the time thinking, I've never seen that color before, and I don't know what that color means. They were supposed to be Nichrome 80 uh, wraps around the outside of the Aliens. Turns out that that was stainless steel. I thought it was Nichrome. It, it said in the note that it was Nichrome, um, but those coils were actually... 304 stainless steel and that's why they turned that interesting color. I don't use a lot of stainless steel, especially in round wire. In round wire, it's all canthal or all nichrome 80 uh, anarchist wire and so that's what I'm used to. I'm not used to building and seeing glowing, uh, you know, and color changing stainless steel and so that's what those coils were, were stainless steel. It's nothing out of the ordinary but I remember seeing them and feeling like, oh, I was very, you know, this is kind of weirding me out. I've never seen those colors before. It's not an abnormal thing. J-Boy sent me an email uh, not too long after that and said, hey, those were stainless steel coils. I know the note said it was nichrome, but they're actually stainless steel and that's why they look that way. He's like, I just don't want people thinking that I that I make junky coils or that I'm using materials that aren't, uh, you know, normal wire materials or anything like that. So those were stainless steel coils. If you want to check out the J-Boy coils that I used and they were great, they are still rocking in that little Tobina atomizer or Tobino. Someday I'll get that right. That little Tobino atomizer, which is actually getting washed out right now, but they are rockin' rockin' coils that I very, very much enjoyed using. So thank you, J-Boy, for the coils, and thank you, J-Boy, for uh, clarifying why they had turned that color, you know, to a person that doesn't use a lot of stainless steel. Like I said, it was a very, uh, you know, shocking thing. I was like, what? Well, something I've never seen before. But it turns out that they're stainless steel coils. Anyway, um, there's some news to cover. We got some stuff going on today. And before we get into the new study that was done talking about uh, vaping damaging DNA, I wanted to read something that Phil had sent me from Cancer Research UK. That is a great place for information. This is um, 10 questions, or I don't know if it's 10. Yeah, 10 common questions about e-cigarettes 
answered. This is answered by doctors. This is answered by Cancer Research UK. And it's a really sort of, uh, it's a cool little list. The first thing they say on here, I'm just going to read through these, are cigarettes less harmful than smoking? Dr. McEwen says, yes, experts think that e-cigarettes are, based on what we know so far, less harmful than cigarettes. Smoking is associated with a number of various serious health risks to both the smoker and the others around them. So switching from tobacco to e-cigarettes substantially reduces a major health risk. And that right there is something to keep in mind moving forward throughout all of vaping. Vaping is tobacco harm reduction. That's that's what it is. You are reducing the tobacco harm in your life. And according to the Royal College of Physicians, it is at least 95% better for you than traditional tobacco cigarettes and is widely accepted, not so much in the United States, but widely accepted by the Royal College of Physicians and Cancer Research UK that yes, X Experts think that e-cigarettes are safer, at least 95% safer for you. And we're going to talk about that little other 5% in just a minute. But they have a lot of other questions on here. Things like, is nicotine dangerous? Do e-cigarettes produce harmful chemicals or blow up? Is it okay to smoke and vape at the same time? I'd actually be interested to know that. There is no evidence that smoking cigarettes and vaping at the same time is any worse than just smoking tobacco. But the greatest health benefits are seen when people stop smoking tobacco completely. So quitting should be the goal. Some people manage to switch completely to vaping quickly while others take a little time. You may have to try a number of different e-cigarettes and liquids before you find one that helps you stop smoking completely. This is quite normal. That is, that is very quite normal. That is something that I have been saying on YouTube for years and years and years now. But yeah, it's a lot of trial and error. It's finding that, that one device, that one tank, that one e-liquid that you just love, you just fall in love with. It's final, the final tipping point where you go, yes, finally, this is the setup where I feel like I don't need cigarettes anymore. They even go so far as to suggest, like recommend certain vaping devices. Which e-cigarette should I start with? Well, according to Cancer Research UK, it says this is very much a personal choice. Absolutely is a personal choice. The refillable tank system e-cigarettes might take a bit of getting used to, but they allow you to use more flavors and generally deliver more nicotine than e-cigarettes that look like tobacco cigarettes. Users tend to say, these types of devices are more satisfying. Specialist e-cigarette retailers can give you advice and you can also chat to other e-cigarette users on a range of internet forums or just right here on YouTube. How much nicotine you need will depend on how much nicotine you're used to getting from your cigarettes. And of course, how much nicotine you get from your e-liquid will depend on the type of e-cigarette that you use and how you use it. As a rough guide, most 20 a day smokers, so 20 a day smokers in, in UK term is like a pack a day smoker. In the United States, when you talk to a smoker, they always tell you uh, how many packs a day that they smoked. I'm a pack a day smoker. I'm a two pack a day smoker. I'm about a, you know, a pack every two day smokers. In the UK, they measure things um, individually. So people will say, eh, I I'm a 10 a day. I smoke 10 a day or 20 a day. And 20 a day is basically the equivalent of being a pack a day smoker. As a rough guide, most 20 a day smokers will find that 18 milligram or 1.8% nicotine is sufficient. So you can start with this and see how you get on. And ultimately, yeah, that's exactly what I did with vaping. When I first started vaping, I started off with 36 milligram e-liquid because I really I really wanted vaping to stick. I wanted to just vape and not have any cigarettes. So I figured I would get one of the highest at the time available nicotine concentrations. And yeah, it it worked. It did the trick. I quickly, very quickly dropped down from 36 to 24 and from 24 to 18, then 18 to 12. And then when sub ohm tanks and clouds broke cloud stuff started happening, I dropped down to six and now I'm down to three, sometimes zero. So yes, I definitely agree with that. When you're just freshly starting out, a nice high nicotine liquid will really help make the switch a little bit less rough. It makes it a little bit easier. And then and from then on, you can decide how much nicotine you want to use. The goal for most people, including myself, is to just drop down. I like being at three. I like having the ability to vape three sometimes, vape zero sometimes. And what allows me to do that is I vape a lot. If I was vaping a lot, lot less than I was, like when I was working at Starbucks, for example, and we had 15 minute vape breaks every two hours, I used to vape some high nicotine stuff. I used to vape 18 milligram at work because I'd only have 
have 15 minutes to vape 18 milligrams. And when I vape things like salt nicks or higher nicotine stuff or 18 milligram stuff, like say out of a pod system, this Sauron Air, for example, is loaded up with 12 milligram Glacier Banana. I vape higher nicotine stuff the same way that I would vape, uh, that I would, I would smoke a cigarette. When I was a smoker, I rarely, outside of Las Vegas, I would say, I rarely like chain smoked. I never smoked in my house. I never smoked in my car. If I wanted a cigarette, I would go outside. Me and my brother would just go outside, have a cigarette, go back inside. We never smoked inside and I never smoked in my car, like I said. So that's the way that I treat high nicotine stuff. This is why I take high nicotine stuff to places like when we went to Universal Studios this last, uh, you know, whatever that was, two weeks ago for Casey Pickle's birthday. Like when I go to Disneyland or like if I go out to a bar or I go to a rock show or this last, just this last Sunday, we went and got uh, tattooed. Uh, I didn't get tattooed. Casey got tattooed. Casey got an amazing tattoo by Taylor Wooten. He's an amazing tattoo artist, but I was in there the whole time and I went outside twice for a vape break. And I had some high nicotine stuff with me and I honestly just treated it like a cigarette. I went out there for maybe 15 minutes, had a few pulls here and there, checked the Instagrams, went back inside and stopped vaping. But because I vape a lot otherwise, I'm sitting in my office vaping all day, I'm sitting upstairs vaping all day, three milligram, zero milligram, it's good. That that feels fine to me. They go on to list a few more frequently asked questions. How many, uh, uh, no, he says, uh, should I use my e-cigarettes to help me stop smoking? Will e-cigarettes be cheaper for me than smoking? Can I use e-cigarettes in places where I can't smoke? I'd actually like to read that one, but the last one says, is secondhand vapor from e-cigarettes dangerous? How can I protect my children? And Dr. McEwen chimes in again, says, unlike secondhand smoke from cigarettes, which is is known to cause cancer, there's no evidence that secondhand e-cigarette vapor is dangerous to others. Some studies have found traces of toxic chemicals in secondhand vapor, but at such low levels, they're not harmful to those around you. E-cigarettes aren't recommended for use by non-smokers and children. Yes, Obviously, that, that that goes without saying. If you're not a smoker to begin with, just don't bother picking up vaping. There is some risk associated with vaping. I absolutely agree with that. If you're not a smoker, then just, just avoid vaping. Just, just don't pick up vaping. And obviously, all of us in the industry, I mean, myself included, I know if I can't speak for everybody, but I think I can speak for everybody. Of course, things like sales to underage, kids or minors it is a big no-no. We don't we don't want any of that. I don't want anybody underage vaping if they're not a smoker. But I just thought this was really cool, really interesting. Thank you, Phil, for sending this my way. I'm going to post a link to this in the description of this video. It's a great sort of uh, frequently asked questions. If someone's asking you about vaping, like, hey, I want to get kind of get on what it started in vaping. How should I do it? You could be like, look, there's this great article on Cancer Research UK. It's going to give you some great great information, but this would be a great place to send current smokers that want to maybe make that switch over to vaping. This is a very, very cool article. Thank you, Phil, for sending that my way. And that's going to kind of segue into the next thing I'm talking about. I had one of my subscribers, let me find him. Oh, uh, shit. Okay, I can't, I can't find the original tweet that was tweeted at me. Oh, here it is. Uh, a fellow named Matt. Uh, Matt tweeted at me and said, um, now it's bad for your DNA. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know what's up with the local news here in Pittsburgh. And he tweeted me a link from a Pittsburgh KDKA out of Pittsburgh. And they had an article that says e-cigarettes as bad for your DNA as smoking tobacco study says. I am firmly of the mindset that I am vaping to reduce the harm in my life. Heavy, heavy cigarette smoker, now I'm a vapor. And the reason that I stopped smoking was because we know how completely terribly horrible it is for you. I mean, it, it's bad on a whole other level for you. The problem is I was very, very addicted and I really very much enjoyed smoking. And so now that a lot of us are not smoking anymore and just vaping, we made that decision to reduce the harm in our life. So I think we need to take things fairly seriously when 
when science and news comes out that says that vaping, oh, there, there's potential things. There's potential things going wrong. A lot of people see like a negative report and say, oh, well, scientists found this, that, and the other, X, Y, Z. And because a lot of those studies get debunked very quickly, our knee-jerk reaction is to just dismiss any negative news altogether, which I am definitely not comfortable doing because I'm trying to reduce the harm in my life. And so I want to pay very close attention to any studies, any scientific studies that come out regarding vaping and how they affect your health. We're doing this to lead healthier lives. And so I think we really need to pay attention when studies like this come out. The Pittsburgh article from that local Pittsburgh news station was very, very, uh, you know, alarmist. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's real bad. It's just as bad for you. And, and vaping is terrible and all this stuff. They're really trying to demonize vaping. And I wanted to dig into it just a little bit more. And so I found the actual study via Reddit of what what went on. What are they what are they actually talking about here? We know from the Royal College of Physicians saying that vaping is at least 95% safer for you than traditional tobacco cigarettes. And a lot of this isn't me just speculating. A lot of this is within this article as well. I'm doing my best to try to understand everything and I'm doing my best not to try to jump to any weird conclusions that aren't backed up by any sort of data. And it's also important to keep in mind that this is the very first study of this. This is the first thing talking about vaping possibly damaging your DNA. And a lot of people don't take that very seriously. They kind of uh, brushed it off a little bit, but damaging your DNA is a fairly serious thing that can happen. Smoking tobacco damages your DNA on an irreparable level. DNA getting damaged is one of the factors that can contribute to lung cancer. And it isn't just cigarette smoking, tobacco burning, you know, tobacco smoke and inhaling it that causes this damage to the DNA, but tobacco smoke does it on, on a very grand scale. There are a lot of other things like alcohol that can also damage your DNA, which leads to things like heart disease, like lung cancer. And keep in mind, I am not a doctor. I am not giving any medical advice to anybody ever, please. All I'm doing is reading the available data, trying to interpret it as best I can, and then communicate that and give my opinions as well. And so this study comes from the PNAS, which is Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America. And it is a lot. I read this whole thing and understood very, very little of it. You can kind of put little parts together in your head of how they did this, but they really did do their due diligence on this. They listed what types of products they used, how they tested these products. But the big headline on this is e-cigarette smoke, which, okay, that's the first red flag right there. It should say e-cigarette vapor. And I mean, I'm not trying to tell the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America how to write their paper, but that really should say e-cigarette vapor instead of e-cigarette smoke. But it says e-cigarette smoke damages DNA and reduces repair activity in mouse, lung, heart, and bladder, as well as human lung and bladder cells. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm just trying to interpret this the best that I can. And so kind of what I gathered from this is there are tobacco specific nitrosamines, TSNAs. And this is something that has been getting discussed within the vapor industry for many, many years now. Way back in 2010, I believe, I was on the VaporCast podcast, which is not a podcast anymore, but it was a great podcast back in the day. I think it was my second time being on that podcast and Scott, one of the hosts of the show, was talking about tobacco specific nitrosamines, TSNAs. This is something that they had found within vaping all those many years ago. And when those TSNAs get vaporized, or the, the term they use is nitrosation, the nitrosation of nicotine, which I don't know what nitrosation means. I think it means vaporizing, but we're gonna look into this a little bit more. And I apologize for being just a little bit all over the place when I'm reading this, but I just discovered this news last night, and I figured it was something that 
you know, could be important enough, that definitely was important enough to be included in this vlog, and that's why I want to include it. No, nitrosation is the process of converting organic compounds into nitroso derivatives, i.e. compounds containing the RNO functionality. Okay, uh, this is a little bit out of my wheelhouse at the moment. But from nicotine, those tobacco-specific nitrosamines create NNA, NNN and NNK. It says NNN and NNK are potent carcinogens that can reduce cancer, that can in induce, sorry, not reduce, that can induce cancer in different organs, including the lung. And so here's where we're gonna get into the part where I'm going to speculate a little bit about what is actually going on here. And I'm trying, like I said, not to jump to any wild conclusions, but we know from the Royal College of Physicians, whom I trust implicitly, we know they have reported reported and said and published that vaping is at least 95% safer for you, better for you than traditional burning traditional tobacco cigarettes. So what this article goes on to say is that even though they have found these TSNAs, these tobacco-specific nitrosamines, NNK, which is an isoform of the nicotine, even though they have found these in e-cigarettes, um, the exposure to them is 97% less than a traditional tobacco cigarette. They said it's on par with individuals who are using nicotine replacement therapy, so things like gums and patches and lozenges. And I am willing to speculate that that is the 5% risk from the Royal College of Physicians report. This article says it's 3%, the Royal College of Physicians said it's 5%, but I believe those percentages to be the same thing. I think that the 5% risk from vaping comes from these tobacco-specific nitrosamines found within nicotine, and they're finding now that these tobacco-specific nitrosamines are the things that can still damage DNA, which can be one of the factors that leads to things like heart disease, lung cancer, bladder cancer. Again, uh, please, I'm, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist. I'm gonna say this one more time. I'm trying to interpret all of this, which I'm gonna post a link down in the description to this study. I'm just trying to interpret all of this and understand it as best I can. The worry that these scientists are running into, it says uh, many of these e-cig users have taken up e-cigs, uh, but are not necessarily doing it for the purpose of quitting. Rather, it's because they are assuming that e-cigarette smoke is safe. They go on to say, currently there are 18 million e-cigarette smokers. They keep saying, they keep using the term smokers. Currently there are 18 million e-cig smokers in the United States and 16% of high school students smoke an e-cig. Understanding the carcinogenity of ECS is an urgent public health issue, issue since it takes decades for carcinogen exposure to induce cancer in humans. Decades. For decades to come, there will be no meaningful epidol... Ep, ep, okay. Hi. I need uh, Nick Guy the Science Man to read this word for me. Nick Guy the Science Man. Epidemiological epidemiological, epidemiological, ah, there it is. Since it takes decades for carcinogen exposure to induce cancer in humans for decades to come, there will be no meaningful epidemiological Okay, I give up. Epidemiological study to address the carcinogenity of ECS. Therefore, animal models and cell culture models are the reasonable alternatives to address this question. So what this feels like to me is the first step into a bigger world of knowledge regarding tobacco, tobacco harm reduction, how nicotine affects the body, and how vaping affects the body. I think this is very, very crucial, and I'm insanely, intently interested to see See where this science goes. I would love to see what Dr. Constantinos Farsalinos thinks of this as well. This is literally just the first study, the first step, like I said, into this bigger world of knowledge, this bigger understanding of tobacco and nicotine and how vaping affects the body and how smoking affects the body and how nicotine replacement therapy is about on par with vaping. At least that's what I'm getting from this. And so that kind of poses the question. I'd like to pose the question to you. If you knew without a doubt that vaping was 95% safer for you than traditional tobacco cigarettes, 
but that 5% was still there. That 5% is still a risk. It's still a risk from these tobacco specific nitrosamines, which can cause a breakdown in DNA, which is one of the factors that leads to lung cancer. If you knew that risk unequivocally to be 5%, would you continue vaping? I am a freedom guy and I want everybody to have as much freedom as they possibly can. And I believe that if you are an adult free American, and I don't wanna to get too political on here, but if I believe if you are an adult and you are a free adult American, you should be allowed to put whatever you want into your body. I think if someone makes the decision to start smoking cigarettes, that they absolutely have the freedom to do that. It's a, it's a terrible decision, but they do have the freedom to do that. And so when it comes to vaping, if this is 95% better for you, but there is still a 5% risk in there. How do you feel about that? Would you continue vaping? Would you purposefully lower your nicotine? Would you vape maybe less pod systems, more three milligram stuff, maybe more one and a half milligram stuff? Maybe the industry needs lower nicotine levels in their liquids. Would you go straight to zero milligram? I think it's an interesting discussion to bring up. I don't think this is anything that is like, like panic worthy. I don't think this is any sort of reasoning to completely uh, ban or, 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 you know, regulate out of existence vapor products. I think once we can do this science a lot more and we know exactly the risks involved, that that's how vaping should be regulated based on the risks. Like alcohol is regulated based on the risks. Like tobacco is regulated based on the risks. Like even marijuana is regulated based on the risks. I'm really very interested, like I said, without, you know, repeating myself too much, I'm really very interested to see where this science goes, what we can learn from it, and if we can nail down actually what the risks of vaping are. Because we always tell people, I always tell people, vaping is not designed to be 100% safe. I've said this in at least 8,000 vlogs over the last few years. Vaping is not intended to be 100% safe. There is literally nothing in life that is 100% safe. Drinking too much water can kill you. So with that in mind, that 5%, that's an interesting little 5% of risk there. And uh, I'm just repeating myself now. I'm excited to see where the science goes. I would like to know much more about it. I've read this through top to bottom a few times and I understand very little of it. And I hope upon more and more readings of it that I'll get to understand it a little bit more. I'm gonna put a link down in the description to this exact pnas.org article. It's the full fucking study, man. It's a lot to read. It's a lot to take in. And already a lot of major mainstream media news outlets are getting access to this information and they're presenting it in a very alarmist way. And it doesn't need to be presented in an alarmist way because this is scientific discovery. Scientific discovery is exciting things. Scientific discovery is what makes society better in my opinion. The more we know about the world around us and ourselves, the better off we're going to be. I'm sure everybody's gonna have speculations and questions about this and that's why I'm addressing it because I want to get that conversation started. This is something I'd like people to start talking about, to start looking into, you know? Because things like this directly affect our health, and our health is the reason why we made the switch from tobacco smoking to vaping in the first place. So me, for one, I would like to know as much about vaping as I can. I would like to know what harm, if any, is happening because of vaping, because of nicotine, because of these tobacco-specific nitrosamines, damaging DNA. This is all really very super interesting to me. As for me right now, obviously, yeah, I, I'm, I'm vaping. I'm perfectly comfortable vaping three milligrams, zero milligrams sometimes, 18 milligrams sometimes. I don't think the science is there yet, but I'm excited to see the science get there. Anyway, that's enough. I'm done rambling. That's what I have for news this week. As always, I would encourage you to read the articles in the description and of course, click on that CASA link, get involved, follow their calls to action. They're there's a lot of stuff starting up again. There's a new thing in Washington. S. I just saw it on Instagram. Okay, I'm gonna look for it. Uh, okay. Uh, 
I thought, oh, here, I thought I was tagged in it. Bonsai Vapors posted this. Stop the 60% vape tax. Your voice matters. Call now. I'm going to link down in the description to the Bonsai Vapors Instagram. Step one, call this number. Say you oppose. It's HB2165. This is a 60% vape tax. And honestly, what I'm most excited about this study is the possibility of basing regulations on science rather than just wild speculation. But if tobacco cigarettes are taxed at this percentage and we discover that vaping is actually 95% safer for you, I think that it should be taxed at this percentage. Whatever the risk is, that's what it should be taxed at. But like I said, a whole big thing going on in Washington State right now, led up by Bonsai Vapors. Bonsai Vapors, of course, is part of the Pink Lung Brigade. The Pink Lung Brigade has, doing, it has been doing some amazing things up there in Washington. They obviously have my full support. If you're a Washington vapor, I highly suggest just getting involved with the Pink Lung Brigade up there and figure out what's going on with HB 2165 in Washington State. And that's just one. There are many across the country. I know something is happening as well in New York right now. I'm actually not sure if that passed or not. Anyway, there's a lot going on and CASA can tell you much more about it. Anyway, that's what I have right now for news and advocacy. So what I want to do is I set up that little uh, pocket box and uh, yeah, now I want to set it up and vape it. I haven't even vaped it yet. So let's do that now. And, and I don't have a bumper, so I'm going to have to do blurry transition. So I got my blue pocket box right here. It's the navy blue with the carbon fiber. Looks very, very cool. Very, very pocketable pocket box. Very, very pocketable. Real easy to set up. I just grabbed out the coil head. I put exactly six droplets of juice just right down the center and gave it, you know, kind of a little bit of a, of a whip shake like this, just get all that juice flowing into the coil head where it's supposed to go. I attached the coil head to the top. Very simple, easy threading. I screwed it all down together. I filled up the tank, the reservoir with juice, and it has one of those maximum fill lines on it. So I just filled it up to that line. I plunked it all together. It's very me one ish in construction. You fill up the tank, you put it all together. There is one single button and there's a tiny, tiny little LED indicator right there that does that Inokin light show that they always do at Flash is from red, yellow, green when you turn it on and then it's green when you're using it and it's yellow as the battery's dying and then it finally turns red when your battery is beyond, you know, drained out. That's not a USB mini. Micro USB. Is that a micro USB? I think that's a micro USB type A if I have done my research correctly, which I probably haven't done. There's a USB for charging in it. It has a uh, 0.35 ohm coil head, 40 watt maximum output, two mil glass tank on the inside, and this is the 0.35 ohm coil head, and there is a point uh, a mouth to lung 1.2 ohm coil head available as well. It has an internal 1200 ma or milliamp hour battery. So yeah, I'm just gonna give this a vape. In fact, looking at this, uh oh. Oh, okay, it's a little bit gurgly. Looking at this, uh, I just have been letting it sit here the whole time that I've been doing that news. I just let it sit so that the juice would like absorb into the coil head. So the first time I, I press the button, I don't get some massive dry hit. But even looking at this, I can see that my juice level has already dropped significantly, which leads me to believe that this coil head might be just a hair flooded. I can feel a little bit of slurpiness going on there, a little bit of slurpy gurgliness going on in there, but let's try it out. Just gonna rock the airflow full open. Let's have our first toot here. That's not bad. The flavor's not bad. I loaded this up with that uh, Hooch Pier Banana that I got from uh, Air Mr. Eric Vinyl and Vapor. Shout out to Eric Vinyl and Vapor. Got this from him not too long ago, and it is a beautiful banana flavor. I absolutely love it, and it tastes uh, it tastes pretty good in here. I have a feeling this coil head might need to break in a little bit. I think every coil head I've ever used has a little bit of a break in period time, and it could be anywhere from like five to six puffs to like a day. I've had coil heads in the past in devices like this or inside sub ohm tanks that have taken literally a full 24 hours to break in before you start getting that really good flavor. It's a, it's a nice little size. I find myself holding it like this. Two fingers sitting on the rest of my fingers. Little uh, top detonator texture rubber style switch right there that is, oh, clicky? 
That's clicky. It still is uh, a little slurpy. It's still a little uh, sloshy in there. Oh, I turned it off. Oh, it's a three-click on-off system, not a five-click. I like that. Yeah, oh, shit. So far, so good. So far, so good, pocket box. The airflow is a little on the loud side, but it's still fairly smooth. I don't feel any turbulence in any way. And even though it is a little slurpy in there, I have not got any juice in my mouth yet, which is a huge bonus. You kind of have to just vape through the slurpiness a little, I guess. Now there's some sub ohm tanks and coil heads like this that when you're vaping it, it's great. And then as soon as you let it sit for a little bit, it absorbs too much juice and gets slurpy and then you have to vape it out again. And I'm hoping that's not the case with this coil head. I hate having to vape through slurpy flooded coil heads every time I pick up my device. But then when I'm using the device, I don't get any of that slurpiness. I'm hoping that's not the case with this Inokin pocket box. Very nice, very nice. I mean, it's not gonna win any cloud comps, but it's a compact little banger right here that's uh, delivering some very nice flavor. Anyway, yeah, that is the pocket box. I am gonna spend a lot more time with this before it's, uh, you know, before it gets a full, uh, full, full review. I just like spending, uh, I just like spending probably what some people would call maybe an excessive amount of time with products. I like to spend a few weeks with products before it goes up for a YouTube video for sure. And this is one of those things that I'm just gonna be be using and using and using. Interesting. Wow, that's an interesting little thing from uh, from Inokin. As far as the Scion 2 goes, I'm actually going to use that for my very random juice tasting, which will be included in this vlog a little bit later on. But what I would like to do right now, I like where I am. I like this position right here. Might fiddle around with the lighting a little bit. Anyway, that's unimportant stuff, but what I want to do is stay right here, and I would actually like to do some retro vaping. Okay, so let's do some retro vaping. I got a device here that I haven't talked about in a very, very long time, but it is a device that I used to truly, truly love. This was my daily banger for a very, very long time. I mean, this is way back in the day. This is like 2012, maybe, maybe 2013, but I really think this was more 2012. I'm talking about that Inokin iTaste SVD. Does anybody remember the Inokin iTaste SVD? SVD. And I promise you, it's just sheer coincidence that my retro vaping is an Inokin and then my vape mail was an Inokin and then I'm going to use the Inokin Scion tank in the very random juice tasting. In fact, I'm going to be using an Inokin tank on this Inokin retro vaping. I promise that this is all just coincidence. This vlog is not sponsored in any way by Inokin. But this was the iTaste SVD. It was a single 18650 regulated tube mod. This came out to compete with things like the Pro Vary. When the Pro Vary first came out, that was it. The Pro Vary was the king of vaping for a very long time. Everybody wanted a Pro Vary topped with a Cardo tank, and that was the way to vape. I actually never owned a Pro Vary. I was only using one for a very brief time for review before I sent it back. But I loved rocking my Pro Vary with a Cardo tank. I loved rocking my Pro Vary with an old Joytech disposable 510 atomizer. And this was a telescoping mod. You could use a lot of batteries in this. You could use smaller 16340 batteries, 18350 batteries, or you could open it all the way up and use a single 18650 battery in it, which made this device very, very tall. It was like carrying around a baton. Get an 18650 in there and see how tall it is. Yeah, that's a that's a tall regulated device. And then when you put a big tank on here, it was big. This was a lot to carry around if you were a vapor. We didn't have like tiny cool little stuff like this back in the day. So three clicks on, the button uh, lit up green and you had a tiny, tiny little LCD display right there. You had adjustment uh, voltage up on this 
this side and adjustment voltage down on this side. So you could kind of hold it like this and adjust it with your thumb and your finger. And this adjusted in 0.5 watt increments and it did variable voltage as well as variable wattage. It would round robin around. Oh no, this was just variable wattage. There was a way to get it to be variable voltage as well. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I can't believe I remember how to do that, switching it from voltage to wattage mode. So now it's reading uh, 4.7 volts, 4.3 volts, 4.2 volts. So you could hold the up and the fire button and switch it back into wattage mode and it said P for power. That's how you knew you were in wattage mode. And then it went all the way from like three to 15 watts, I believe. Yeah, three watts to 15 watts. It's had a 15 watt maximum output. The first thing I wanna use on it is this little E-Leaf Basal tank. I should try to like stick an RDA on here or something and see if we can vape it at 15 watts. But I'm going to turn this to 12 watts, exactly like it was on that E-Leaf Basal. And even with this tiny E-Leaf Basal tank, this is still a big freaking mod. This was a thing that I carried around. I used to carry this to work every day. I used to vape this in front of people at work. No wonder they were all giving me weird looks. Okay. Oh, shit. It's not firing. Ruh row. All right. Well, let's do some old school vape science here. Sometimes what happens is uh, in these old mods, the 510 pin gets pressed down. This is an issue we used to have a lot in the vaping world. It was rampant everywhere. The days before spring loaded or adjustable 510 pins, the 510s in here were static, but they would sit on a little cushion of like O ring silicone insulator. And if you had a 510 pin, Pin that was more protruding than your other 510 pins, it would fuck with the 510 on your device and push it down too far to reach other 510 pins. Again, this is the day before hybrid mods, before anybody ever cared about protruding 510 pins. So there is a fairly good chance that it's just the 510 pin on here that's been pushed down. In fact, I remember this is something you had to do with the SVD quite a bit. And all you do is you take a little flathead screwdriver and you kind of rock the 510 back and forth, slowly, slowly lifting it up, slowly, slowly raising it. If you went too far, it was possible to damage your device. This is the kind of troubleshooting shit we had to deal with in 2012. At least I think this came out in 2012. I'm going to double check. Oh, okay. That is definitely not firing. It's okay. I've got a backup. I've got a backup tank here. I'm going to use the tank from the Inokin Endura T20S. Oh, you're not firing either, are you? Hmm, what a fucking bummer, bro. Nothing, nothing, nothing. God, what a letdown. Come on, man, you should work. Could also be that this 510 contact in here is just very, very dirty. I apologize, let me do a little bit of troubleshooting because I would really like to get this SVD working again for no other reason really than to just vape it in this vlog. Wow, that contact is so fucking dirty in there. I mean, this device has basically been sitting in a box since 2012, so I wouldn't expect it to be, uh, you know, perfectly clean and perfect working order. I at least thought it would work. I at least thought it would fire uh, an atomizer. Definitely has to be making a connection now. If this doesn't fire, that's it. I give up. One, two, three. Turn it back on. Let's set the wattage to 15 watts. Fuck. Son of a bitch. What a bummer. What, 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 a, what a fucking bummer. What a letdown of a retro vaping, man. I really wanted this to work. I really wanted to vape on this. And that is, uh, wow, that's really, a, that's really a fucking bummer, bro. I wonder if an RDA will work on it. I wonder if something with a real protruding 510 pin will work on it. Let's try. We got nothing to lose. It's not vaping anyway. I feel like the tank, uh, I feel like the, ooh, those 510 threads though. Nothing. It's just giving me nothing. It's giving me zero. Well, my eye taste SVD is finally just dead, dead, dead to the world, dead. And that's just kind of a huge fucking bummer, man. Um, this did have a beauty ring on top, so you could attach like uh, an ego style clearomizer that had these big threads around the outside. Oh, fuck, well, I didn't have very high hopes for this, but I was really hoping it would work even just a little bit. I can't imagine, maybe the resistance is too low? What's the resistance on these tanks? We need something real high resistance? Yeah, this is a point eight. 
I bet that's why it's not firing is because this is a 0.8. The E-Leaf Basal is really high though. It's like a 1.5 resistance. Shit, man, do I have nothing that can run on this right now? I'm sorry, this is really upsetting me. I really want to vape this in the retro vaping. Yeah, this is a 1.5 ohm coil and I have a feeling it's just that 510 pin that's giving me trouble. This is my last resort. This is my last resort. Cut my life into pieces. This is my last resort. Also, I can't fucking stand Papa Roach. I just, I, I just think they're the worst. My apologies to any Papa Roach fans. If you like Papa Roach, then you should definitely listen to Papa Roach and enjoy them, but uh, eh, they're not for me. <gasps> it fired! Oh, holy fuck, it fired! I knew it, I knew it was that 510 pin. The resistance on this tank was too low, the resistance on this tank was too low, but a 1.5 ohm coil, after I fiddled with that 510 and worked it back up again, it is firing. I've got this set to 14 watts, exactly the same wattage that it is on the Basal Box Mod. Now we can vape this retro vaping. And it still looks ridiculous. Vapor! Holy crap. Okay. Whew. Good, to know, good to know that I can still troubleshoot an old iTaste SVD and get it working again. That's just useless knowledge I have now that will pay out in no way in the future. I'm never going to be like uh, running for political office or giving an interview or something when they're like, well, uh, Nick, you seem to be a very uh, accomplished YouTuber. You seem to have a great following of people over there. But can you fix a 2012 iTaste SVD? Well, yes, absolutely I can. I can't believe it. It's vaping. Success! Okay, so after all of that, um, it's just the iTase SVD. It was something I used to use a lot of. Uh, I used to use really high resistance cartomizer tanks on this. I actually used to dislike using this with an 18650 because it was so big. I actually have smaller batteries in here that I can show you. So there it is with a single 18650. That's the height. And then this is the slightly reduced height, I guess. This is using an 18500 battery and yeah, still vapes. And there's an even smaller battery battery that can fit in here as well. And these were the batteries that I like to use with it and because of the size. I wanted the size to be a lot smaller so I would just carry around multiple batteries, obviously in plastic cases. And this is the smallest size that I could get it. It's a lot more reasonable, a lot more manageable right there, right? It's still big, but when you see the battery that's in here, you're going to you're going to be shocked. You're going to say, that is a huge mod for that size of a battery. And I would carry around multiples of these batteries because I liked this size so much better. It was much easier, smaller. You could hide it a little bit in your hand a little bit better. So what's on the inside? Are you ready for it? Look at this little battery. Look at that thing. This is a tiny little 18350 battery. This is the same battery that the very first mod ever created ran on. The Trog screwdriver ran on these tiny little batteries. And there was a time, believe it or not, in the vape industry that this was the biggest, best, most efficient battery that anybody had ever used. This is, this is long before we discovered 18650 batteries. In fact, one of the first 18650 tube battery mods that came out, the Protégé and the Silver Bullet. No, the Prodigy, the Pure Smoker Prodigy and the Silver Bullet were the first two to utilize big 18650 batteries. And I remember getting my first Silver Bullet and thinking, holy fuck, this thing is gigantic. But I also got really accustomed to that nice, long 18650 battery life. So, you know, you put up with it. Thankfully, now we have tiny little dual 18650 guys like this that are substantially smaller than the Inokin iTaste SVD, even in tiny little 18350 mode. Anyway, I'm glad I got this vape in. There's a little history lesson on vaping in, uh, in 2012. This is what was going on in 2000. 2012. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link down the description. I think I have an iTaste SVD review video. I think it's the review video that I actually shot 
when I went to Vape Revolution uh, for the first time. That was my first vape shop uh, visit that I, I first vape shop I had ever been to. And I believe that video is on YouTube, so I'll find it and link to it in the description. But fuck yeah, I taste SVD. We got it working, man. And now it's just gonna go back into the box. For shit, man. I mean, it does 15 watts. I can run this little basilisk tank on it. This is a tank that I've been using on its own mod for a weeks now, weeks and weeks now. So I might just keep this around just for the nostalgia factor. Mm -hmm. That's what I got for retro vaping, everybody. Um, what I would like to do right now is not change my camera angle, but I would like to read some viewer mails. So like I said, we're gonna read some viewer mails. I got my first viewer mail here uh, from Jason. He wrote me an email that said, PSA on dangerous Wismec packaging. Interesting. What up, Nick? Jason here, your friendly neighborhood to your friendly neighbor to the Great White North, emailing you today with a PSA I think we need to the bring to the table as it's quite dangerous, not just for the customer, but for people working in the transportation of this product. So our shop just received a large order within that large order with some new Wismec RX 2700 mods that come with the 2X Amp King 2700 cells. We tend to order these as they are cheaper for both the customers and the retailer when buying the kits with the batteries included. But wasn't I surprised when I opened one up to find the bats not only in the device, but not even plastic wrapped. I shit you not, fresh out of the box, you can turn the device on with a simple five click of the button. This is an insanely neglectful practice on Wismex part and is potentially illegal in regards to transport. Um, Yes, that, that is actually absolutely true. I've written an email to Wismec regarding this matter, but I haven't heard anything back yet. However, I feel this is a desperate need of public attention. If you agree and wish to use this in a vid, by all means, insert use my shit spiel here. Let's keep not only vapors using safe practices, but manufacturers as well. Yeah, really well said. Um, that is very interesting. I noticed the same thing when I got my Wismec 21700 kit as as well. The batteries were in it. It was not on, but I just pulled it out, felt the batteries in it, turned it on, and, and it turned right on. That could be bad. That could be a potentially hazardous thing. Additionally, you're not supposed to ship batteries that aren't in something. When I buy batteries from IMR Batteries, the batteries are individually cardboard boxed, and then those cardboard boxes are put into bigger cardboard boxes, and then those packs of cardboard boxes are put into a bigger cardboard box that ends up at my house. And it seems really weird for me to, for, and it seems really weird to me for Wismec to put the batteries inside their mod and have it be active, have it be live batteries. You shouldn't be transporting batteries if things are touching the connections. This is why I tell people not to store batteries or travel with batteries in your charger even though it's unplugged because you still run the risk of discharging your battery and possibly running to some sort of uh, catastrophic battery failure which would be very very, very bad. Jason, if Wismec ever gets back to you, please email me with what Wismec says about this because yeah, that's that's uh, that's no good. That That's no good on Wismex part. I got another email here from uh, William, and I'm not going to share uh, everything. Um, I, I try my best not to just uh, put a lot of GoFundMes out there for people. It's one of those things I, I enjoy helping people, and I like other people helping people as well, but I don't necessarily want to just bombard my vlog with a lot of uh, GoFundMes and fundraisers and things like that like that. I feel like that's that's a lot to ask from my subscribers who are really just passively watching these videos. But I do have a GoFundMe here from William. And rather than read the email that, that William sent me, which goes into a little bit more detail, I'm going to read directly from the GoFundMe uh, page. It says, my father, Fernando, and I don't believe that's uh, William's father. This is William's father-in-law. Uh, it says, Fernando is diagnosed with cancer in his colon that has progressed to his liver and brain. He is fighting 
providing and is starting treatments. However, since having to start treatments, my dad is not able to su- work to support his family. We're all coming together and help any way we can. But we find ourselves needing to help fund expenses such as rent and bills without his income. I don't want my father to be worried about what we're going to pay for his treatments, let alone the bills when he should be focused on his life. Please, I ask if you can assist anything. Please help my dad in your prayers. And I'm going to post a link down in the description to this. Um, This is something that really, really bothers me. Uh, It really upsets me. It really upsets me on a bigger level than a lot of other things because um, things like this uh, affect not just the person uh, with the disease or with cancer, but it affects everybody else around them, including their families. I can't imagine what they're going through right now. And I hate the idea. It's like, oh, not only are you diagnosed with cancer, but here's a fuck ton of medical bills. Oh, also you can't work and you won't be able to pay rent or your bills. I think it's un reasonable that in 2018 in the United States of America, when someone gets diagnosed with something like cancer, that they have to start a GoFundMe in order to try to stay alive. That sticks in my craw more than anything I have ever experienced before. And my heart really goes out to William and his family. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link down in the description to Williams Families GoFundMe. If anybody wants to give anything, I think that would be spectacular. And thank you, William, for writing in and uh, thank you for, for the very kind words as well. I got another email here from Jack. Jack writes in and says, Hey Nick, my name is Jack. Feel free to use my name and everything else in the vlog. Uh, to the point, I recently appro- applied for the British Army and wanted a good mouth to lung. I've been vaping for some time now. If you remember in the podcast, I also misspelled Ruby's name and put uh, Rudy. <laughs> oh, did we answer your question on uh, on the culture of clouds? Anyway, he says, also, can I ask for a shout out for my other half? Her name is Paige and she's recently given birth to my son. His name is Mason and they are the reason I've been sticking with vaping. Also, what is the skateboard deck that you have? Thanks for all you do and vape on. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, the skateboard deck. Uh, it's it's moved, it's over here now. Yeah, this skateboard deck right here. Real talk skateboards. Um, So I apologize, I can't remember the name of the gentleman's name, but... Uh, uh, the owner of Real Talk Skateboards contacted me, said he was a big fan, he watches all of my vlogs, and he's a vapor as well, and he offered to send me a skateboard deck, and he let me pick it, and I picked this one, just because I thought the graphic was so, so very cool. I like the Lady Death, I like the moon, I like the, the scythe that she has, I like that she's, you know, attractive and is holding the goblet, and there's goats down here, there's a goat down here, and she's sort of sitting on skulls. I just really liked this. I thought it was really cool. Now I use it to cover up my cable modem, um, but I really would like to hang this on the wall somewhere. Maybe maybe somewhere back here. I'd love to hang that sideways, like across over my couch. Very, very cool. But that comes from Real Talk Skateboards. And I am a person who is not a skateboarder. I, I've never been good at it. Uh, when I was very, very young, I my parents bought me a Nash skateboard and uh, I used to skateboard around my neighborhood with like big wheels on it. It had like, you know, the guards, like those plastic guards on the sides. And then it had like a big plastic thing right here for stopping. It was very much a mass produced skateboard, but I like skateboarding and I like this deck and I like the culture that kind of goes along with skateboarding. And so I wanted to have this and uh, that's where that came from. That's very, very cool. So as far as a mouth to lung goes, there's a few mouth to lungs right now that I've been using like crazy. One of them is that E-Leaf Basal kit. I love it. I just think it's fantastic. There are also some pod systems out there. The newest version of the bow is actually very very, very nice. I've been using the Fix a lot, although my Fix battery is showing its, age, showing its age and it's starting to fire after I stop dragging for longer and longer and longer. And that kind of freaks me out a little bit. And I don't know if it's launched yet, but that new Space Jam pod system, the Bird, is awesome. I have already gone through two tanks, two pods on that bird because I like it so much. I've been using it so much. Might be something worth checking out. Of course, there is always, always the Mi 1. The Mi 1 is like my favorite little mouth to lung banger guy. I I, I absolutely love it. There are also some new mouth to lung stuff from Inokin. Again, once again, yeah, more Inokin stuff, but there is the Zenith and there is 
the Ares. The Ares is an RTA. The Zenith is a drop-in coil head that I've been testing out for the last two weeks, and it is pretty bang, and I hope to have a review for it very, very soon. Anyway, I'm going to put this down. Thank you so much, Jack, for writing in. Good luck in the British Army. All the best to you and your boy Mason and your better half, Paige. You are all definitely shouted out. Got another email here from Brian. Brian writes in and says, What up, Nick? Congrats on your engagement to the pickle. Thank you very much. I am a member of the Cool Kids Club and a longtime viewer. I've got a quick question. Besides the Namber Juice original line, can you suggest some good 50-50 juices that are good for my me pod? Uh, thanks for everything you do. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sure I can. The only one that springs to mind is Boilermaker Vapor. Boilermaker, their juices are 50-50 and they do up to an 18 milligram as well. In the me pod, I've actually been using 6 and 12 because I tend to to lung inhale the me pod more than I mouth to lung it. This is 12 milligram Lucky Pear from the Namber Classics and it's delicious. And most of the time I'm lung inhaling it. Gives me that nice, uh, you know, that nice kick in the uh, Scott Bonner. I get you 69 used to say, gives you a nice kick in the back of your throat. <laughs> that was my really bad Scott Bonner impression. I do not mean to offend any British people out there. But yeah, 50-50, uh, the Namber Classics or the Namber Originals, uh, Boilermaker, but I don't know. I don't know who else does. I believe Mount Baker Vapor, you can choose your PG-VG ratio. And I believe the Basardo line, the Phil Basardo juice, which I haven't seen in a really long time. I believe that was actually like a 60% PG 40% VG juice as well. And you know what? I'm honestly not sure if any of my subscribers out there know of any good 50-50 juices for things like the Me Pod. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe we can give Brian some good information this week. And lastly, I got an email here from Eric. Eric writes in and says, Hey Nick, thanks for taking the time to read this. No problem. No problem at all, Eric. I know you're busy. I uh, just have to preface this. I've been vaping for almost three years now, and I watch your videos all the time. You make amazing content. Uh, st stop it with the compliments, but thank you. Thank you. The work you put up is palpable on the screen. Really, the point here is I would like to attempt to do what you do. Not exactly, of course, but I would love to be a YouTuber and review mods and addies and whatever. My question is this. How would you recommend I get started? I would really love your input. I hope to hear back from you. Yeah, here's the thing, Eric. Um, yeah, just, just do it. Just dive in. You know what I mean? There are a lot, lot, and I mean a lot of vape YouTubers on YouTube. There are a lot of vape-centric channels on YouTube. And you kind of just start like anything else. You just jump in. The first thing I would suggest doing is getting a fairly decent camera, even a good webcam like that Logitech C920 cam that I used for years on end is a very solid camera that's not going to like destroy your budget. Just make sure that you have plenty of light, you speak clearly, and your video looks good. That's all I've ever wanted to do is have my videos look good, sound good, and have me speak clearly and, and coherently, which oftentimes is is just not what happens <laughs> at all. But yeah, honestly, just jump in. Uh, be fun. Have fun. Be yourself. Uh, just make sure that you have the time to dedicate to it. Uh, when I when I started YouTubing back in 2009, there were no other vape YouTubers out there. And I didn't know what I was doing. I just uploaded videos whenever, didn't really care. I just wanted to be consistent with it. And a lot of people, they get into it and they start doing YouTube stuff. And this isn't just related to vape. This is related to YouTube in general, but people will jump on YouTube and they'll record a few vlogs and they'll start their Instagram and they'll get their logo and they'll get their name and they'll release a few videos and then they don't have the time to dedicate to it. Real life gets in the way, which is completely understandable. And they'll step away from their YouTube YouTube for months on end and then they'll do one of those like hey guess who's back type of things and then they'll do some more videos and they'll upload some more content and then real life things happen and they have to step away so just make sure that you have the time to dedicate to it it is fun doing YouTube is the best thing that I've ever done I I love it. I love doing YouTube, but it does take a lot of time. It takes a lot of dedication and you just have to make sure that you have that time in your life to dedicate to YouTube, to putting out regular content. But honestly, 
My biggest advice is, is just do it, just be yourself, just have fun with it. And like I said, the vape scene on YouTube is very overly crazily saturated, but that doesn't mean that you won't be able to find your audience. That's what all of this is about anyway, is finding your audience. I'm not trying to be into the millions of subscribers like Rip Trippers. I don't want, I don't want to try to appeal to everybody all of the time. I'd like to appeal to my audience, to the people that actually watch my videos that people that actually give a shit that's that's who, who that's who these videos are for so just because there are a lot of other youtubers that doesn't mean that you won't find your own audience anyway i hope that helps out eric and i'm gonna leave vape mail no not vape mail i'm gonna leave viewer mail right there if anybody else has any viewer mails that they would like answered on this here vlog program you can send them on over nick at grimgreen.com just mark your subject line viewer mails and uh, they may not get replied to via email, but they do all get read and they all do get cataloged and, and I take screenshots and I put them in my folders and I do all this stuff so that they can end up on the vlog. But yeah, send them on over. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for viewer mail. What I would like to do right now, before we get to favorite comments of the week, we're gonna end it with favorite comments of the week. What I would like to do right now is a very random juice tasting and what we're gonna be tasting is, oh, it's a surprise. Hang on, you'll find out in a second. So yeah, we are going to be tasting Freeman Homecoming. This is a strawberry rice pudding flavor, which I read that flavor description. I went strawberry rice pudding. Uh, I'm into that. That sounds like something I'd really be into. So we're going to be tasting that and we're going to be tasting it out of this new Scion 2 tank, which I haven't set up yet. We gave it a little quick lick earlier quick lick. We gave it a little quick look earlier, but what I'm going to do is just set up this, okay, Chubby Gorilla 120s. Mother fuck, that's hard to open. Whew. I'm glad uh, Chubby Gorillas makes those impossible to open. Anyway, I'm just going to set this up, going to put some juice in here, going to put some juice in the coil heads. These coil heads are ginormous, so I want to make sure they get really saturated in there. I kind of like to like hold it at an angle and just squeeze some in and kind of rotate it like a like a dryer, like the inside of a dryer. You just you just rotate it around, slosh that juice around, get it all absorbed into the cotton. Maybe put a little bit out here, a little bit on this side, a little bit over here, a little bit over here. Not necessary, just something I like to do. I'm gonna screw this all together, pop it open. Blech. Cool, so I'm gonna let that soak in for just a hot minute while I look at the flavor profile of this and we give it a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a knuckle test, right? Hmm, yeah. Uh, tastes like strawberry. There's a little bit of a uh, creamy, maybe a little bit of a custardy component kind of going on there. The website says Freeman Homecoming Vape Juice is a strawberry sweet vape combined with the rich creamy smoothness of rice pudding. Rice pudding is a unique flavor, creamy and smooth, with a yet with a baked confection dessert quality that has made it a family favorite for many, many generations. Balancing the flavor out, balancing the flavor of right out of the oven rice pudding on is the spot on, what? Balancing the flavor of right out of the oven rice pudding is the spot on strawberry e-juice flavor. That sentence makes zero sense, Freeman. Balancing the flavor of right out of the oven rice pudding is the spot on strawberry e-juice flavor. I've read it twice now and, and that sentence makes no sense to me. The combination is spectacular. Homecoming strawberry and rice pudding e-liquid has quickly become a favorite. Freeman vape juice is of course known for full bodied vapor that is the envy of our competitors. And the flavors are amazing and more and more vapors every single day. What? And our flavors are amazing more and more vapors every single day. It's cool though, it's whatever. So this is soaking up. I got the airflow turned off. I'm gonna give it a few like. Yeah, there's some bubbles happening in there now. Okay, so it's not firing because the 510 pin on this Inokin tank is sitting underneath the goddamn threads. How is that even possible in 2018? Okay, now it's telling me that it's shorted. I get the feeling that this uh, is a non, uh, you know, production model of the Scion 2 tank. So I'm not gonna be judging it too harshly. This happens sometimes. Okay, well, there you go. Now it's on the Evic Primo and it is Firing, 0.28, 50 watts, Freeman, homecoming, strawberry and rice pudding, vape juice, first toot. I'm excited, let's do this.
Okay. Uh, definitely needs more wattage. 0.3 at 70 watts now. One more toot. Hmm. That is a unique flavor. It's less strawberry than I thought it would be. It's mostly rice pudding-y flavor. Rice pudding is a is it's a it's a weird flavor. It's kind of uh it's kind of yig-ish. Uh the Grim Cult juice yig is a little bit rice pudding-y. And then there's the the dinner lady rice pudding juice as well. This is only the third juice I've ever had that has that sort of uh really interestingly complex rice pudding flavor. What I'm gonna do, as I always do, I'm just gonna sit here, I'm gonna vape this a little bit and then I'm going to come back and talk about it. Really a, a very unique flavor. Uh, upon knuckle testing, I tasted a lot of strawberry, and in the vape, I don't get that much strawberry. This is a very well-balanced juice, which is something I really look for in juices. I like juices to be one cohesive flavor, no matter how much is in it. Like that Arcadia, how it's like lemonberry jawbreaker. I don't taste any of those components separately. It all tastes like one cohesive flavor, which to me is a really well-balanced juice. This is very similar to that. It's strawberry rice pudding. I don't get strawberry on the inhale and rice pudding on the exhale. I'm not overwhelmed by one flavor over the other. It feels like a very cohesive, balanced juice. It's definitely well below the threshold of too sweet for me. I have that too sweet fence where juices over here get less and less sweet. Then I have that line where it's like, over the line it is just it's just too sweet it gets a little bit too sweet artificially sweet and gaggy to me and this juice is firmly on the safe side of the fence it feels nice it feels nice and sweet this feels like a flavor that i won't get overwhelmed by or bored by after vaping it for a while It's very well mixed. The strawberry is a nice, sweet, natural tasting strawberry. And the rice pudding on its own isn't a very sweet flavor to begin with, but there is some nice sweetness in there. You get a little bit of like that bakery type of sensation with it. But rice pudding in general isn't a very overly sweet pudding. The predominant flavor in rice pudding is like a, uh, a vanilla type of flavor. Like a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of strawberry, and it's all really well balanced. This is not like a sweet candy juice. So if you're looking for something that's real sweet and real candy-ish, it's not this Freeman. It's not this Freeman homecoming. This is a much more uh, delicate, balanced, sort of uh, crafty, almost crafty liquid. Yeah, good. It's nice. It's mellow. I, I I dig this. I'm really into this. Yeah, cool. All right, well, I'm going to put a link down in the description to freemanvapejuice.com where you can check out the strawberry rice pudding vape juice. This makes me actually really interested to try some of their other flavors as well. They do 0, 3, and 6. You get a 120 for 20 bucks, and you can choose your PG-VG ratio. Oh, no, it's only offered in 80-20. Well, there you go. 80-20 blend, 120 mils, 0, 3, and 6, 19. It's a friggin' delicious juice. This is a this is a this is a rich, flavorful juice. It's not too sweet. That's kind of all I'm really ever after. As for the Scion 2 tank, I get the vibe, like I said, that this isn't a production version of the Scion 2 tank. The fit and finish on it is very nice. I like the clicky airflow a lot, that it clicks into place wherever you put it. These big honking coil heads on the inside are just a lot of like clouds bro, clouds vapor. I think it actually looks very cool. I like the way it's styled. I like the top and I like this little drip tip and I really like how easy to fill it is there's a little arrow right here and you go boop kind of like that uh u-force vupu u-force you just go boop slide it over fill it up boop slide it back you're good to go there's no uh unscrewing or anything like that going on in here the airflow on this tank feels very smooth very even and this tank does that thing that for some reason i'm obsessed with and i don't know why i'm obsessed with it but it feels like you're breathing through a sponge a little bit it's kind of got that that breathing through a sponge thing going on
So obviously, I'm going to vape this tank a lot more before it gets a full review or before we start talking about it in any sort of co official capacity. I want to make sure that this is actually the production version of this tank. But yeah, anyway, that's what I got for uh, a very random juice tasting. It's time to wrap this up. We're going to wrap this vlog up. I like this camera angle. I haven't moved it all day. We are going to do right now my favorite comments of the week. Uh, so we got nothing to go over. I didn't ask for any uh, comments or feedback or anything like that. So we got nothing to go over. What we have are just some funny favorite comments of the week. Uh, we got Rob starting it off and he says, I'll tear you down from top to bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Rob is uh, Ro Rob's a funny guy. I follow him on Instagram. He's actually one of my uh, patrons, one of the Cool Kids Club, one of the Yo Yo A Cool Kids Club. He's just an all around uh, really funny guy. He's like a comment of the week veteran. He's like a comment of the week all star. I generally find his comments uh, very, very hilarious. I got another one here from Dan. Dan says, Dictate. Oh, that's Larry Tate's brother. Uh -huh. I kind of see what you did there, sir. Got another one here. <laughs> Got another one here from Ian. Ian left a comment and said, Milky Jello is my new stripper name. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage Milky Jello. I'm not sure that if I was in a strip club, which BT dubs, I've never been inside of a strip club. I feel like it's just one of those things I've gone 40 years of my life without setting foot inside of a strip club. I might just go my whole life without ever setting, setting foot inside of a strip club. But if I was in a strip club, I'm not sure I'd stick around to see the performance of Milky Jello. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Uh, anyway, got another one here from Cameron. Cameron writes a second, uh, writes in and says, let's take a second to just all think about that word. Squonk. 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 Why did they call it squonking? Such a weird word. Reminds me of Lord of the Flies, I think. I don't know anymore. <gasps> I don't know, dude. So random. I don't know why they called it squonking. I was in, here's a little bit of Grandpa Grimm right now, but I remember being in the thread on ECF when someone first used the term squonking and everyone loved it so much, they just they just kept it going. Squonkers. Oh, these are squonkers. Squonking, squonking. Because someone's like, you ever notice that your thing makes a little squonky? sound when you press it and, and from then on kind of everybody just started calling them squonkers before that we called them bottom feeders which I don't know I kind of prefer squonking to bottom feeding I kind of want the whole BF bottom feeding thing to kind of go away I much prefer the term squonking. But you're right, Cameron. It is a really weird word, but it's based off of the sound that they make when you go squonk. Oh yeah. Uh, Chris left a comment on uh, the Bro Trip 8 video, which I don't think was actually Bro Trip 8. I think it was actually Bro Trip 9, but it's just it's just one of those things. I kind of stopped keeping track and 8 sounded right to me. But we went out to the Dumont Dunes and, and it was crazy. If you haven't checked that video out, check it out. It's hilarious. But Chris Mix World left a comment on that video and said, I can't get over if he died. The first thing they would see is the Cause of Death t-shirt. <laughs> Uh, I was wearing my obituary t-shirt out there. It's the Cause of Death album on the back. It just says Cause of Death. And uh, that's my biggest fear, actually. I don't want to die in that t-shirt. I don't need that kind of irony, I guess, around my death. And we're just going to leave it right here. Last favorite comment of the week on that same exact video. Bizzle Basil left a comment and said, Wow, you really did not drive anything pussy. It, call, it called me a pussy. Don't worry, Bizzle Basil. I've been called a lot worse. And ultimately, your uh, opinion, Bizzle Basil, means uh, very little to me. But yeah, dude, I was scared. I didn't want to... I don't trust myself driving a fucking dune buggy up a 1400 foot sand dune are you crazy but next time i go out to the dunes with Dwayne, yes i am absolutely going to drive that can am around maybe on some of like the little tiny hills like there's some little tiny hills and i'll just go real slow and kind of go around the little tiny hills to get a feel for it but i would love to drive on those sand dunes it's so so stupid fun. Anyway, uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Nico from Finland who helps me screen capture some favorite comments of the week. He's a, he's a stand-up guy and I know I said we were going to talk about Nico in one of the vlogs. Not my dog Nico. This is Nico from Finland.
Finland. I know I said we were going to talk about Nico from Finland in one of my vlogs. In the next vlog, I promise we will talk. Who is Nico? Who's this Nico guy that's been helping me out in Finland? We're going to be talking a little bit about him. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to put a beer segment in this vlog yet. And I realize that this is the end of the vlog. So if you made it this far, you saw whether or not I was going to put a beer segment in it. But just know as of right now, I may not put a beer segment in the vlog. But now I'm thinking that yes, I am going to put a beer segment in the vlog. So hopefully there was a beer segment in this vlog and I honestly don't know why I even brought that up. That is weird. That is literally just me thinking out loud. Anyway, we're going to wrap this vlog up. I still got a lot of work to do for ECC, which is why this is a little bit of a condensed vlog, but no worries. I have a feeling it's still going to run well over an hour and a half since I can't seem to make a vlog video that is under an hour. But anyway, it is what it is. It's the end of the vlog. And I always say this, but you folks, you that make it to the end of the vlog, you're just my favorite and I definitely owe you a hug. And if you're not into hugs, I also dispense crisp high fives. I hope to be giving out a lot of hugs and a lot of high fives at ECC in February. So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to vape my little, uh, what was this thing called? The pocket box. Yes. I'm going to vape my little Inokin pocket box and I'm going to edit some video and I'm just going to keep grinding away, man. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hope everybody's digging the look of the new office. I, I love it. I'm going to do an office tour very, very soon. It might be a thing that I do just for my patrons at first, but I do really want to do an office tour because I have not been this stoked on my office literally ever. Every office, every vape layer that I have been doing over the last nine years has led to this office, this vape layer. So anyway, a lot of good stuff coming up. ECC's coming up. I'm going to be vlogging ECC. We're going to have regular reviews. We're going to have regular vlogs. There's going to be a regular vlog next week. Yes, there is going to be a regular vlog next week. I'm not sure if any of my vlog subscribers listen to the podcast, but you're more than welcome to come check out the Culture of Clouds podcast. Me and Ruby Roo have just a fantastic time over there. We upload new podcasts every Sunday evening. And because of ECC, I don't think that there's going to be a podcast next week, but there will be the following week. Anyway, again, this is just me just thinking things out out loud. It's just something that I have to do from time to time. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. That's what I got, everybody. I'm going to grab my pocket rocket. No, nope, what's this called? Oh, I should not have called this the pocket rocket. The pocket box, and I'm going to edit some video. So that's what I got, everybody. Here, is this ending long enough? Have I rambled on long enough? Should I keep going? Should I mention that there's not going to be a podcast again next week? Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Am I just out of practice with vlogging? I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe it's the new office. Maybe I'm just sitting on another side of my office, and it just feels weird. Finally, one last time, that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, let's keep on vaping. Anyway, there you go. That's the pocket box. I'm going to spend uh, a little bit more... <coughs> what am I doing?